So welcome to this webinar organized by the Information and Data Management Community of Practice of the CJR Platform for Big Data and Agriculture. I'm Sally Nober and I will facilitate the webinar. Today we'll learn about Guardian, a digital platform developed by the CJR Platform for Big Data and Agriculture that provides support across the entire data lifecycle, allowing users to manage data responsibly towards open and fair outcomes. Guardian underwent an improvement phase in 2021. And so today, Meda Devare is here to tell us more about the platform, the different tools it provides, and the last updates. Meda is an agronomist and microbial ecologist with experience in bioinformatics, data management, and semantic web standards. She is a senior research fellow at IFPRI and leads one of the three modules of the CGR platform for big data and agriculture, leading efforts to operationalize the FAIR principle towards FAIR data. Do not interrupt the presentation. We'll take all your questions after the talk. At that point, I will give you the floor to ask your questions. So please write them in the Q&A box during the presentation to not forget them and also help me facilitate the Q&A session. And if you have any technical issue, you can write me via the chat and I will try to help. So now I will let Meda Devare tell us more about Guardian. Over to you, Meda. Thanks. Just uh, let me know if anything goes awry or if you can't hear me or whatever. Um, so hi, everybody. First of all, I'm going to say hello and then I think I'll turn off my camera just to be sure there are no further glitches, um, but I'll turn it back on later. So Celine's already provided an introduction to, to what we're going to talk about today. Uh, we are talking about Guardian and Guardian, you will see from this little screenshot I presented has changed a little bit to those of you who are already somewhat familiar with it. Um, we, we, and I'll show you just exactly how it's changed. Let's just dive right in. Um, but, but before I do that, uh, let me sort of uh, contextualize what I'm going to show you. So let's say we want, we, we have a query like this. We want to find survey data on fertilizer use. Um, in maize uh, for Africa, so in maize, maize systems. Um, how would we search for that in Guardian? What we've tried to do is to make the, the search and, the, and, the, and, 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 and essentially the, the, the whole system a little bit more streamlined, a little bit more friendly. So um, I'm looking for maize data. Uh, I, my, my tendency is to start with, with the crop. Uh, so, so I'm gonna put in maize there. Um, you'll see immediately it took us to an advanced search box and it auto-entered auto the maze there. Um, I'm going to add another rule with, connected by an and because I'm looking for maze and um, region Africa. So here it's actually giving you a bit of a, of a hierarchy. Yeah, I can choose sub-Saharan Africa for that matter. I'm going to choose Africa because that's my query for now. Um, and, and again, you, you can choose from a variety of different uh, filters here to, to, to hone in on the kind of data you're looking for. Um, I'll add another rule because we're looking for survey data. Now I can't choose the kind of data yet here. We might get to that at some future point, but I can choose the provider. And I know that uh, it's likely that if I choose the, the IFPRI, the International Food Policy Research Institute, I'm likely to find more of that survey data. But I'm also looking for fertilizer information. Now I could, I could add another rule here, uh, but what I might want to do is hedge my bets a little bit and say I'm actually looking for fertilizer or nutrient because some people use the term nutrients uh, to refer to fertilizer as well. So what I'll do here is I'll add a group and I'll say this particular little um, insert is going to be uh, um, joined by an or, not an and. And I'll say any field should contain fertilizer, and I might want to add even or fertilizer spelt the British way, but I won't. I'll just say, um, it, you know, the, the, the field should contain either fertilizer or nutrient um, and maize, Africa, and, and IFPRI as a provider. Uh, so this is a very nice way of searching. If you get lost and you don't know how to set these up, there is a guide here. I won't, go, I won't click on it, but you can look at it at your leisure. Um, and, and see where, you know, what that looks like. Uh, be aware that what I'm showing you is not yet in production. It's a, it's a demo site, so it will take a little longer to load. And so, um, you know, you might see a little uh, discrepancy. I have provided you with the demo uh, uh, site link, uh, uh, but, but when, when it gets ported over, you'll be, you'll be going to guardian.bigdata.cgr.org. Uh, this will happen in the next few days. Right, so I've, I've got my results here and you'll see that there's many things I can do now. 
I can export my search results for one and that'll give me all of the citations along with the, the guardian ID for each data set. In this case, I'm looking at data sets, not publications, which are here to the, to the right of the data sets. Uh, I am looking at the 187 data sets. I can export that the, this, this search um, and it'll give me whatever's on the page. And I can set that of course, by, by saying, all right, I want, I want 20 or 50 or whatever it is. Um, and, and I can go through the pages and it'll, it'll give me all of uh, the stuff I want. Um, so that's exporting the search results. That's something that you had wanted as users. We put that in. Um, the other thing is you can look at just the open data if you want. So I can, I can click on open here and it will give me the open data sets out of these 187 data sets, uh, which is 113 data sets. Um, so that's nice. I can also go to result analytics and that's kind of a nifty feature. And here um, you can actually visually um, uh, filter your stuff. So you can see that there are 39 of these data sets are Ethiopia. There's something on authors. Um, and, and you know, in this case, we've limited the search to IFPRI, so you, you only see IFPRI. But I can also look at only USAID funded or only BMGF funded uh, sets if I want. Uh, I can look at uh, a data sliced by either CRPs or initiatives, since we've included that as well uh, to come. Uh, but let's let's just filter by by Ethiopia here, and when I do that, it immediately adds Ethiopia as, as one of the filters and gives you just the results for Ethiopia. I've already chosen open, uh, so that's what I get. So that's kind of the the search functionality. I'm not going to dive into the data sets themselves. I'll leave you to explore a little bit more there. Um, it it hasn't changed radically. Um, I will show you a little bit more on the tools and the, um, we probably won't address the analytics so much, but I want to focus more on the tools. Before I move out and back into uh, my presentation, I'm going to look at um, the about because that's changed a little bit. We've tried to beef that up a bit um, and we recognized that we weren't really uh, giving enough uh, visibility to the providers. So we now have providers and everything here is linked. You can go directly to the, to the center link or the provider link, the provider website that is, um, and you can go to their repository by clicking on, on this little thing uh, here that takes you out of Guardian. By clicking on any of these repository links that you see here, you see how many of, of the uh, resources in Guardian are attributable to, to these providers um, by clicking on something like this. So if I click on SIAT uh, data sets here, uh, what it's doing is narrowing to uh, the, the provider as SIAT and giving you a sense of what the data sets are for SIAT. Um, so this is something that's also kind of nice. You can look at, look at how that slices and dices out uh, for, for in, in a variety of different ways. This is very much CGIR world, uh, but, but you can look at other providers in the same way as well. So, uh, you know, we've got the Foreign Commonwealth Development Office and other providers as well. So that is um, a Guardian sort of at a, at a pretty high level. Um, I will leave you to, to have another look at, at what, it, what, it, you know, what its functionalities are, but you can again go to you know, the repositories and the organizations this way. You can uh, search Guardian resources, which will take you back to the search, um, explore data tools, uh, view the analytics, and you can explore assets in a geographic manner as well. So if I click on this, I will be looking at all of the data assets we have, um, or in this case, all the documents we have for uh, the Southern Asia region, um, or in this case, the data sets for the same region. Uh, the color scheme shows you for what regions we have the most number of resources, either data or publications. I'm looking at data sets right now because I've clicked on this. So um, have a look at that. There are still things to come here that, that I will talk through as I, as I go back to my presentation, but let's go back to the presentation, which I have to find, I think that's it. Um, this is where we jumped off, uh, but I have a bunch of slides here that will show you, you know, so when the slides are shared, you can have a look at all these things. Um, this was just in case, you know, live demos are a bit of a, <laughs> a bit of a risk. And so I, I wanted to make sure that I had uh, the slides. I did want to show you this as well, which is, um, uh, I, I don't know, I hope you can see my screen. I don't know how to quite, quite how to get rid of this thing, but I, maybe I'll stick it up here. Well, we, we see it perfectly, Mira. Yeah, okay, good. Um, 
so so what this is showing is a, a, a feature that's not yet there. So, you know, before you saw data sets and you saw documents, you didn't see anything on maps. Um, that's coming very shortly and it will be ported over to the production guardian um, quite, quite soon. Uh, but what we've done is, is we've now enabled people to say, okay, um, I'm interested in Ethiopia or a particular administrative region, uh, 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 an authoritative administ an administrative level uh, within Ethiopia, within the country, any country, um, or a polygon within that country. And for that polygon, I'm interested in a variety of different data that I want to download. I'm interested in, um, in this case, it's showing me harvested weed area from uh, the map spam data set um, for 2010. Uh, but I can also click on uh, organic carbon uh, data from ISRIC here, um, land use data from APSIS. So these are all different sources of data that you can call on for any particular geolocation or polygon, um, whether it's country level or, or, or anything else. Um, and then you can download that data. So it's a way of visually looking at um, querying uh, the, the data and then getting that information, which is quite nice. It's a, this is pretty new functionality, obviously, because it's not yet um, available in the demo site. Um, I wanna move pretty quickly to the so what of this. What's so what that you can do all of this? Well, um, this, 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 the value of Guardian, I think is best showcased by work that, that was done um, last year and this year. Uh, by a team, uh, Camila Bonilla was at SIAT, uh, the, the Alliance of Biodiversity in SIAT. Uh, she's now in Wageningen. Uh, Jordan Chamberlain was at CIMIT, he's now in uh, FAO. Uh, and Robert Hamont is at UC Davis. And this, this work has recently came out and I think in the October issue of Nature Food. But what they did was they were looking to answer a, a question that's, you know, you could imagine as a broad utility to us, particularly at CGIR. And the question is, um, all right, you know, how important are ecological yield gaps compared to say economic yield gaps? Where, uh, and, and they try to answer that by diving into a particular um, use case uh, by asking where in Africa is uh, fertilizer use actually profitable and how does that compare to actual uh, production? Um, you know, eco ecological uh, yield gap versus economic yield gap. So to do that, they went to Guardian uh, they did a variety of different searches, uh, honing in on fertilizer uh, used by, by, in this case, maize. Um, and they found uh, about 240 data sets. Uh, they used 12,000 uh, odd observations from those 240 data sets. Um, and they were able to develop a machine learning model. Um, they also used a, a, a crop model, QUEFTS, uh, to, to test, you know, to compare the data. Uh, they, they used other data as well, of course, um, including price data, and they were able to compute and then finally uh, present maps uh, of, of, you know, where in Africa, sub-Saharan Africa, uh, fertilizer use might actually be profitable. For that window in time, of course, this doesn't hold forever, but it is a, a good um, use case to, to be using machine learning models with crop models and comparing the outputs from the two, uh, but for that you need data. And for that data, you guardian. And um, you know, this is where the value of open, well-described, interoperable data comes in. Now, of course, the data was not entirely interoperable. It was not even probably slightly interoperable. Uh, they had to do a lot of work, uh, but it was much better than, than not finding any data sets. So let's have a look um, to go into this, this uh, you know, the interoperability uh, problem. Right. Um, there are a variety of tools that are part of the Guardian ecosystem. I've given you the link to the Demo Guardian, um, and, and you can feel free to give us feedback on, on anything that you see there before the, the system is ported over to, to production, um, which, the, you know, where the site will be guardian.bigdata.cgir.org. Guardian and maybe Celine can put that in the chat if she hasn't already. Um, for data collection, we can, uh, you know, we have a, a, a couple of efforts ongoing. Um, there's AgroFIMS, which is the Ag Agronomy Field Information Management System, um, and uh, what we're calling AgroFIMS Plus, for lack of better name right now, which is an in process. Um, uh, there's the data curation uh, part of the tools uh, of Guardian, and these are focused, both these 
things, the data collection, the data curation, very much focus on fairer data. So findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable data. With the data collection, we're focusing on trying to get data to be born fair without any extra effort for, on your part. Um, and with the data curation, uh, we're trying to say, okay, there may be some at least high value legacy data sets or data sets that are collected uh, uh, you know, in ways that don't um, allow them to be already tagged with, with data standards. Um, and so these, these tools, Fairscribe and VMapper, I will demonstrate to you in a, in a little bit, are intended to uh, make data fairer. Uh, the PII engine is to identify personally identifiable information in your uh, data to, to make it not just uh, uh, fair, but, but actually you know, res more responsibly uh, compliant, essentially more, more compliant to the, the, the responsible data guidelines that we, need to, we should be following. The final piece of this is data analysis. Uh, so this is kind of the pipeline, you collect data or, and or you curate it um, and, and then you analyze it. And so we have CG labs, which I'll talk about a little bit, which is a collaborative analytical environment based on Jupyter Notebooks uh, that is very um, uh, uh, flexibly deployable. You can uh, use it, uh, you can install it, you can deploy it on, on your institutional servers, you can deploy it in the cloud, or you can have some sort of hybrid of the two. Um, and it includes um, uh, infrastructure that, that's been deployed to make it very efficient and uh, cost-effective as well. Uh, it, it's based on something, you know, uh, uh, something called Kubernetes, which, which the, the IT folks here will know, but that, that allows CG labs to, to work very efficiently and allows you to save costs as you're running your compute jobs. What you see here as CG labs is the demo version. You will not be able to run full scale stuff on it. You'll have to deploy it somewhere. So uh, that's something for you to look at more closely. Um, as you hover over these things, we have the, the, um, the URLs for you there. Um, so you can, you can take a look that way, but they're all available through tools. The second thing you see here, is um, is a geo toolkit, um, and and that is uh, an effort to provide a geospatial analytical uh, environment again uh, uh, using the Jupyter uh, uh, capable capabilities or Jupyter notebook part of CG Labs, um, and it comes bundled with about a hundred uh, R and Python um, libraries that have been chosen with care, I think, in in collaboration with Jawu's uh, 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 community of practice, the community for spatial information. Um, so that should be quite useful as well. And lastly, we have a, 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 a computational model toolkit, a crop model toolkit really, uh, that includes Lambda functions to help you run crop models, uh, the most common ones like uh, DSAT, QEFTS, APSIM, EcoCrop, um, WOFOST, uh, uh, crop models that are quite commonly used by agricultural researchers. Um, to run them very efficiently uh, in a serverless manner. So you can essentially make service calls uh, to run your models that saves a lot of compute power um, and cost really. Um, this is something that, that, that is quite nice as well. And for, for the geeks amongst you, you might be quite um, interested in using that. So let's dive in a little bit. Um, I wanna book through this quickly um, and, and so I can get to the demo of, of Fairscribe. But the uh, AgroFIMS I mentioned, you can design your field book in AgroFIMS. You're, you're basically designing your field book already tied to ontology variables. Uh, you can collect the data digitally using a variety of different Android um, apps that are free. Um, it, AgroFIMS can help you analyze data. This is something we're still working on. Um, and the pieces to connect uh, the, 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 the final AgroFIMS to an easy upload to institutional repository should be coming very soon as well. I know I've been saying that for some time, but uh, we've been changing how, you know, what, what the pieces of AgroFIMS look like in collaboration with uh, colleagues from the Excellence in Agronomy Initiative and IITA. Uh, so so it's, it's, you know, it's shifting and changing a little bit. Let's dive into the data curation part and have a look at Fairscribe and hope that everything works. Uh, if it doesn't, I've got um, screenshots, but all right. So when you come to Fairscribe, you'll see something that looks like this and, and you'll be able to log in with your ORCID if you have one. You can set up your um, you know, uh, Fairscribe uh, email and password if you want. And if you have a Globus account, I won't go into what Globus is, but if you have one, you can use that. I'm gonna log in with, with ORCID. Um, let me know if you can't see my screen. You should be able to see 
my ORCID uh, login screen right now for Pearscribe. Yes, we see it. Okay, good, good. Um, and so I'm going to sign in because it pre-fills my information for ORCID once I do it once. And I get taken to my dashboard. Uh, when you first sign in, your dashboard will be completely empty. So you'll have to, you know, for the first thing you'll do is create a team. Let's pretend that I don't have any teams and I'm going to create a team. It's very simple, very intuitive, hopefully. Um, uh, so I'll call it test team, something like this. And I can add a little uh, description here, oh, what this team is about. I'm not gonna bother, but I'll just add, add some stuff. And, and I've created the team here. I can invite people to my team because this is a collaborative uh, way of annotating data. So the idea is that you might wanna have a team consisting of uh, your data manager, um, yourself as a researcher perhaps, um, or maybe a couple of other researchers um, and maybe others from, from across your team. And um, once to invite somebody, you, you have to, um, they have to be logged in. So, I mean, they have to be, they have to be signed up. They don't have to be logged in, but they have to be signed up to, to Fairscribe. Um, we want some, we, we anticipate some improvements here where you can send invites even to people who are not signed up. But right now that's how it works. So I'm gonna try Celine. And I find Celine here because I know that she's, um, she's signed up um, uh, to, to Fairscribe. And I can send her an invite. Um, and then she can accept the invite and she's part of my team. Um, so, so it's as easy as that to set up a team. Now, once I've set up a team, I need to actually upload um, stuff to it. Um, so if you look at my test team right now, uh, it's completely empty and I can create a new collection. What we've done is where this makes sense to, collect, to create collections. Uh, for instance, in Excellence in Agronomy, this is a new initiative. Uh, we've got a number of different use cases. So I've gone ahead and set up um, a, a, you know, different use cases just for fun. Uh, we could imagine that the data collection will happen through those use cases. And so that's, that makes a, a reasonable way of setting it up. You can set it up in any way you want. Um, there's no, you know, there's no compunction. I, I am going to today show you this um, particular uh, uh, data set that I have uh, from my previous life. Uh, it's it's a CISA Nepal spring. It's a CISA Nepal uh, 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 um, data set, focusing on uh, some trials I set up for spring maize uh, from 2012 or 2013, something like that. So I set up a collection called CISA Nepal spring maize trials, and all of my trial data can go in here now. Um, when you look at the top, you won't see this isn't clickable, so it, it could be a little you know disconcerting at first. But look at the top of this. I'm in collections right now. If I have any published resources uh, related to the CISA Nepal uh, uh, team, they would be here. There's nothing there right now. Under my tasks, I see this, uh, this one data set. And the reason I see it is because I uploaded uh, the, the, the data set. I've been working on it to save time. I don't wanna sit here and do the whole thing for you, but, but um, you can see that the, um, you know, this is what the interface looks like. Um, you know, once you, once you put in, type in a title of a resource title, it will show up here. This is my resource title uh, that I've typed in and it recognizes the language as English. I've added another language, Nepali. Um, I can delete it as well and just, uh, you know, start typing and it will show up and then I can add it. Don't forget to click add because otherwise it won't show up there. Um, I've added a little description here already. Um, and I've said that this, this resource belongs to CISA Nepal Spring Maze Trials. So when I'm here, it will show me the team collections and I can simply move them over to tell what, where this resource belongs. Um, I add things like citation. Um, this data collection methodology is primarily for socioeconomic data. I have not worried about it too much, um, but it is very important to our socioeconomic friends. So I've, I've you know, we've, we've uh, included it. Temporal coverage is important. Uh, to, to say which, which uh, time period the data refer to and which time period the data have been, you know, the data collection period refers to. Uh, what I want to focus on really is sitting in here, which is the, um, the actual data annotation. And in order to show you that, I am probably going to have to, uh, yeah, let me, let me just take, it, take this all out. And I will show you how to do that. But before we upload any files, um, you, you will continue to, to go through. You'll you'll add the lifecycle information, you know, the versioning information, um, the the release date, the embargo date, if that's if that's relevant. And at any point, you can save your changes. You should be saving your changes. Um, and and you you know, using this little um, 
bar here that shows up um, and you can look at your FAIR score. So I hope that pop-up is visible to you too. You can look up the FAIR score in this way and see, okay, so, um, you know, my, my interoperability stuff is, is, is not doing too well because I have not annotated that data set. Um, and so I can, I can produce an annotated version by directly clicking on this link here, but I'm not gonna do that because I wanna go through the whole thing and show it to you, but be, be aware that you can always be checking FAIR and going back to various pieces of this workflow to make your data fairer. Um, one thing that's critical is for data sets, you must have an author. So I put myself here as author. I also added Simit. Um, uh, and, and in order to add anything, you just click on this and you can add another individual or you can add an organization. Just for fun, let's add um, uh, the, the International uh, Center for Well, let's try. Oh, where is... Um, what does SEAT stand for? I guess it doesn't show up as SEAT anymore, does it? Try biodiversity. All right, so if I start typing, I can, I can pick um, Biodiversity International and I can add it. And typically it will show uh, a URL for the, for the it pre-fills all of this stuff, just like it did for CIMIT. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that out. I'm gonna leave the CIMIT in there. Um, but you'll see that the short name, if I choose individual, you will not be able to put a short name in that's grayed out because there isn't a short name, it, it's not relevant. Uh, this, it works, the functionality works in the same way for funding organizations. And this is also coming from an authoritative source, uh, the, the ROAR um, database, which includes a whole lot of um, uh, uh, a whole lot of organizations, funders, as well as uh, research institutions uh, that have been brought here. And we're also using CGIR's Clarissa uh, database. Um, so this, this is a manually curated sort of uh, version that includes a superset of all of these uh, uh, standards, essentially, uh, to, to be sure that we're giving people what they need. Um, I've added a contact point, this you must add because uh, the, the most repositories require a contact point. So I've added myself, but you could add uh, an organization as well if you want um, in the same way. Now here I've tied this uh, resource to a CRP, a CGIR research program. Um, and this is very CGIR specific. Uh, you don't have to fill it out if you're not CGIR, uh, but, but uh, it, it might be useful to put in a project name. So we're thinking about how we can make this a little bit more flexible. But if you look at, for, for those of us at CGIR, you can choose a CRP or you can choose an initiative. So we've added some of the initiatives here already. And again, you'll, you'll click add to add that and you'll save changes once you go through this. Um, you can also extract keywords. So this is an auto functionality. Uh, when I click on extract keywords, it will automatically extract keywords from the, um, from the description that I've provided, and it will map them to uh, standards. So in this case, Agrivoc and the agronomy ontology. Um, you can also uh, choose a vocabulary and you can add your own keywords here and then click on add. For geospatial coverage, um, I have specified that this is Nepal. I can click on this and I can specify uh, that it's India for instance, or I can simply type in India into the search box. Um, again, quite, quite, quite obvious um, how that works. For license, you can type in the license or choose a license from this list if you know what your license is, uh, what license you wanna use for either software or for um, a resource, a digital resource, or you can use this very, very nice license wizard. Let's just run through it quickly. So what I'm trying to, to um, annotate is a data set. So I choose non-software. I click on next um, and it's asking, um, yes, anyone using my work must you include proper attribution or no, anyone can use my work even without giving me proper, uh, without giving me attribution. So I can click on that. And it tells me that if I choose that, then my license is CC0. Um, and if I choose yes, it takes me to the next level, which is um, can others use my work even for commercial purposes or, or not? And so if I say no, then I end up with a CC by NC license. So the point here, and you, all you have to do is click license, use license, and it'll, it'll be associated with your resource. The point here is to make it easy for people to choose a license, regardless of whether you know anything about these licenses. It, it's, it's 
you know, you don't need to know anything about them. You can, you can step through that quite easy set of questions and get to this point. Um, so let me go back to my license and save changes. And uh, now if I look at my uh, FAIR score, I should be uh, better off. And you can see that, you know, a, a few more of the, I've, I've received a few more of these green uh, ticks um, here. And let me close that out and go back to what I promised you with interoperability. Um, and so here we go to, this is where the interoperability stuff happens. And you can get there, you know, from the check fair and the particular interoperability annotate my data. But I'm going to, I know that this is where it happens. So I'm going to first upload my file, my data set itself. I know where it sits. It sits in current versions here, and it is this data set. So I choose the data set, and I upload the physical file. I can add a description here. Um, I can you know, copy and, and, and paste the same description I used for the resource. Um, hopefully, I, I've looked through that data and certified that it's free of personally identifiable information, no farmer names, no geolocations um, that can identify particular households, et cetera. So I can click on this. Um, and then um, I can start to annotate the data set. So let me click on annotate data set. And when I do that, I get taken to a tool called vMapper that has been developed by uh, the University of Florida and the, uh, you know, particularly the Agricultural Model Intercomparison and Improvement Project, the team there. And we've worked closely with them to build on their work and add to it. And so we continue to collaborate to make sure that our changes, you know, translate across tools, the changes that we want to include in each other's tools anyway. So here, unfortunately, again, you'll have to, you'll have to upload the, the data set. So I browse and I up upload that same data set, which is here. Um, and I confirm, okay, that's the data set I want. And it's churning through and thinking through it. Now this data set, uh, my data set has multiple tabs and they're all showing up here. The first tab is the metadata. The second data is very unfortunately named manipulated data. <laughs> this was done several years ago. It's, uh, it's actually just the data that's been organized. It should have been called organized data or something like that. Um, and then I've got a number of you know, analyses and stuff that I, I was doing uh, way back when. So I confirm this and I'm going to not uh, define the rows, you know, which, you know, uh, which ones are, are um, uh, uh, defined yet. But the point here is that I can copy the definition from another sheet. So this is a multiple sheet uh, workbook. And if I've already defined one sheet and the, the next sheet that I wanna define is exactly the same, I can just click copy and, and essentially map that and save myself a whole lot of time. But right now what I'm going to do is go across to this tab at the top, spreadsheets and click on it. And here again, you'll see all of those different uh, sheets, the spreadsheets in my workbook. I click on manipulated data because the default is the first spreadsheet, the first sheet, which is the metadata in my case. I'm going to again say later here. And here's my actual data that I'm looking at. Um, this is very clean. You're not going to likely see uh, data that's this clean, but uh, you know, it, it's just the, the nature of things when you're looking at legacy data. Um, so I'm going to uh, define my, start, start defining my um, uh, variables. I won't show you all of this. I'll show you some. So I'm gonna choose an ontological term. I can choose either ICASA variables or ontological terms. ICASA is uh, the, the data dictionary used by crop modelers. Um, and I can use either or both. So here, this is experimental sites. So I'll type site and I see a number of sites come up um, or words, terms with site in them. I'm going to choose the agronomy ontology experimental site because that's exactly what this is and it annotates here with uh, the site information. And then I can, I can continue, I can say, okay, this is field, I'm going to choose an ontology term, I type in field, and I see farmer field coming up, sounds good to me, I'm going to click on farmer field and save that. Um, this is replicate, I can go through, define column, um, choose the ontological term, say, you know, type in replicate, I get replication, good enough, I save that. And so on and so forth. I, I can again, you know, let me do a couple more before I get out of here um, and show you how that, what that looks like. So this is again, um, treatment. 
So it's basically calling dynamically, you know, it's calling up all of the, the, the terms that, that relate to this. Um, uh, let me show you one here that, you know, I start typing in and I'll choose ICASA because I know that this is difficult to find in ontologies. I'll start typing in VAR and I get cultivar line or genotype identifier or cultivar name. In my case, I've got identifiers, so I'm because I've numbered them. So I'm going to put in a, a, the, the, the identify here and say save. And now it's, it's, it's showing you that this is a different kind of annotation. I can also add a custom annotation. So suppose, let's suppose just for fun that I'm not finding this. Um, it, it, it is actually there, but I can say this is a customized variable because I'm not finding um, this particular variable. What is the type of variable? I'm going to say it's a general type and I'm going to, uh, uh, it's asking me for a variable code. What am I annotating? Uh, uh, planting method or what was it? I think it was planting method. So let's say it was planting method. I might put in, put in something like, something like that. Um, I might put in, a, put in a description if I want and what kind of value uh, type is it? And in this case, it, it, um, it's actually a numeric value type. Um, and so I will put that in and I'll say save and uh, it, it should annotate that with what I called it planting method. Actually, it wasn't planting method, but anyway, that, that, that's, let's just assume that that was correct. Um, so that's, that's my annotation done. Now, once I've finished my whole file, um, I can go down here to template or go up here to template the middle button here amongst the three and I save my template. And, it's, and I say, okay, here, I don't change the file name. This is really critical. If I change the file name, um, I, you know, the, I, I, the, the fair scribe doesn't see this um, as being done the way it ought to be done. So I go back to my fair scribe and now I must upload um, the, the file. All of these instructions are here. So don't worry there. When you click on the question mark, you'll see all of this. I upload the file. Um, it's in my downloads. And when I upload it, you'll see that that annotate data set changes uh, to a green check saying that, yes, we recognize this annotation, you, you're done. Um, I'm certifying this resource is also free of PII and I can save the changes um, and I can check FAIR to see what my interoperability score looks like. So let's have a quick look at that. Um, and if you see the interoperable score, I'm getting uh, two points because the, the, the data set file uses domain relevant community open formats and the data set included in, the, in, in this, uh, the data included in the data set are annotated. If I linked this to a relevant publication, I get an extra 0.5 um, for, for you know, a full five out of, the four uh, out of the five points. So that's pretty darn good. Um, you, can, you can do that easily. We've enabled it to do, you know, for you to do this easily. Um, and then I save changes and I can upload um, this to, um, to a repository. So to upload it to a repository, I, um, I will need to go back to my CISA uh, uh, Nepal uh, um, uh, thing. I will say, okay, um, whoops, sorry. I will go back to my tasks um, and I will, I should have it under reviews. Yeah, this is what happens when I do a, a live demo. Let's go back to my tasks. Go back up here, send for review. This is a step I missed. So you send it for review first. And then when I send it for review, now it moves out of my tasks. There's nothing there and it goes to my reviews. Now, assuming that I am the person, you know, say I'm the researcher who has the review privileges, I review that. Um, I go through this, all of the metadata is here. I can either send back for re-editing or I can approve it. And once I approve it, um, I can then publish it. So this is the publish workflow. Let me not go into that quite yet, but, but in order to publish it, um, you first have to go to your account settings and set up uh, you know, what repositories you're going to target. And we have a Guardian Dataverse available to anybody there. Uh, you, can, you can add another repository if you want by selecting the repository type, uh, by adding the name of the repository and the API endpoint, um, and you can set up your own repository that way. But let's not uh, go into that because I'm, running out of time, but if anybody is interested in using this workflow, it's open to anybody. Um, so please, please then get in touch with me and we can walk through 
uh, you know, we can set up a work session to walk through this more carefully. Right now, I want to dive back into into uh, into the the presentation, not into my email. Um, let's just go back this way. So here's my presentation, which you should be able to see now. And there's a whole bunch of slides um, that we have skipped. So let me try and go straight to, this is where we ended up. We annotated data, we, we did various things with it. And now here's where we are with, with the, um, uh, with the uh, presentation. So let me, uh, from current slide, there you go. I'm gonna switch gears now and move into the tools, uh, the, the, sorry, the data analysis uh, part of the tools. So I talked about CG Labs, uh, the, the Geo Toolkit and the, the Crop Modeling Toolkit. That's where I am. So I'm gonna talk about the, the data analytical uh, tools. Now we've, we've collected data, uh, we've annotated some, some legacy data, we've, we've done the data curation. Now we're trying to analyze that well curated data, ideally. Um, the, the use case for CG Labs, very broadly speaking, is I'd like to collaborate with my team, my, my team of scientists, uh, to together find and securely exchange data without email, Dropbox, uh, et cetera. I'd like to collaboratively work with them to, to manage code, push and pull into GitHub, and to collaboratively analyze that data. This is CG Labs under the hood. Um, there are some key pieces of this. There's a whole lot of data resources uh, that you can, you can pull on uh, a very large number of data, both uh, Guardian data as well as external to Guardian, including weather and climate data, uh, some financial data, genomics data, et cetera, and earth observation data as well. Um, there's a number of models. We talked about the model pipelines. Uh, those models are tied into this as well um, so that you can quickly call on and execute uh, uh, your models, you can you can search for data and bring it in um, either from your own laptop or from Guardian or from uh, you know an institutional repository or some other repository or from an external resource and bring it in into your team space for team analysis. Um, you execute uh, your your um, your analytics. Um, and you can share the results. So you're looking at the results together. You can you can take them and do something. You can work further with them together. The idea here is to make it easy for teams to work together, to bring the people to the data rather than the data to the people, more or less. Um, and that's increasingly important because we're 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 also building functionality called Open Safely, which allows you to um, uh, allows others to to analyze. Um, socioeconomic or, or you know, data with, with um, sensitive information, whatever that sensitive information might be, without exposing the data. So this is building on um, uh, work that has been done in the biomedical community uh, to assure that patient records are not compromised, patient information is not compromised, but that, um, that uh, uh, data can be used. And this was particularly helpful. It actually came out of the COVID-19 crisis. And so um, uh, as, as a way of quickly being able to look across uh, patient uh, performance uh, to various therapeutics, for instance, and to further refine and develop new therapeutics. Um, and you can imagine that in our, our world, that's really important as well. I've already talked about collaborative work. Or work. Um, low bandwidth is not an issue for this. Um, we can share analytical pipelines. I've already mentioned the flexible deployment either on, on premise on, on the cloud or some hybrid of the two. Um, and you can, you can also use a Dockerized version of this. You can eliminate versioning issues so that, you know, if you have our packages uh, that are three years old that you use for an analysis, uh, they've changed now. Darn, you know, what do I do now? Well, you can go back to your version very easily and, and have all of that at hand. So th there are very, there are lots of um, advantages to using CG Labs. Um, this is just a view of what uh, the, the analytical part of CG Labs look like, looks like. Again, it's, it's, it's built on Jupyter Notebooks, um, has um, direct sort of push and pull. You can, you can do that easily with the Git function there. Um, these data sets that I'm showing on the left here are coming from Guardian primarily, but you can upload them from anywhere. Um, and I'm, I'm showing some scripts there. Um, to, to call on Wofost, which is, which is one of those crop models I talked about, um, and to run it and to see the analysis. And of course, I can have just myself working on this, uh, two people, 
or 25 people as part of my team. So this it's very, again, very flexible. I wanted to end with this, um, I think this is the end, I wanted to end with this um, uh, uh, sort of view of CG labs in use. And this is uh, thanks to Ani Ghosh, Julian Ramirez, uh, and Prakash Jha and others um, in the Alliance of Biodiversity and SIA. This is work that was done by them, but they hit CG labs really, really hard to do these kinds of analysis for a number of crops, a number of uh, value chains, crop, cropping value chains for about 20 countries. Uh, this one that I'm showing you is um, suitability zones for common bean in Kenya, uh, the current scenario, which is A and uh, uh, B that you see under Kenya there and for Ethiopia, the same thing. Um, they used CG labs for this. They found it uh, to perform very well for their needs. Um, and so if you, you know, you, uh, I shouldn't say that you should talk to them, but start with us first, because um, uh, a small team of us uh, involved in excellence in agronomy is also, you know, setting this up and working pretty well um, uh, to get it going. So if you have questions, we're happy to help with it. But there's the URL for you to test. Again, open to anybody to use and deploy. Uh, as you wish. I, I lied when I said that was my last slide. I have uh, one more slide here and then I'll be done. Um, so this is the, the entire ecosystem, roughly speaking, that I, that, I, that I talked about. There's a lot here, so I've tried to distill it down to what we're talking about. We're talking about open data sets um, that are, in this case, to the left here are external. Uh, we're talking about data collection um, uh, uh, and aggregation capabilities that are happening through the work we've done to, you know, on data collection and data curation. Um, we're not there yet. The Holy Grail is not found. We're getting there though, I feel. Uh, we're quite much closer to it than we were a few years ago, certainly. We have, uh, we're working with the University of Florida and AgMAP on data translation and processing, um, uh, including the VMapper tool that you saw uh, for data annotation. But there are also these translators that allow you to take um, data and 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 uh, make it you know be able to plug into models. The mapper is a key piece of that, of course, uh, that that allow you to plug that data into models without wasting weeks, sometimes months, trying to get uh, data model ready. Uh, the, the 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 central piece into which many of these, all of these things, really dock into is CG Labs increasingly. And what we're aiming for is a semantically enriched data pool. So we're trying to get to that. Um, through these variety of different ways. We have the analytics module of CG Labs that I talked about, the Jupyter-based uh, 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 deployment. And we've got the crop modeling tool toolkit uh, that plays a big role in, in for, for the agricultural scientists, the agronomists, particularly amongst us, some breeders, um, as part of this uh, flow as well, as part of these pipelines. Um, there's um, a big compute uh, requirement uh, anticipated uh, related to that. So there's a storage part of this and there's a computing part of this again very flexible um, and and you know um, uh, uh, tweaked to to be as efficient and as cost effective as possible so that things you're not being charged for instance when jobs aren't running that kind of thing um, I talked about the fair publishing workflow um, and that will contribute to data and repositories uh, whatever those repositories look like um, and Guardian will make that data visible for data discovery that again then feeds back into this whole cycle um, with allowing you to action on that data. So this is the sort of the, the 30,000 um, uh, kilometer uh, view of, of this environment. Um, that, and we're talking about all of these functionalities coming together very tightly to enable us, uh, and you know, I'm speaking for CGIR, but also for the agricultural sector in general, to, to become to much more quickly and agilely leverage our uh, our, our, our data assets um, now and for the future. I'm not going to talk about data analytics. I'm, I'm out of time, but uh, have a look at that. I want to thank a huge thank you to to the many people who've contributed to this. I can't name them all. There there were teams of people involved um, to test and work with us on agrofins. Uh, from a variety of different institutions within CGIR and outside CGIR. There's a team uh, that's been helping with CG Labs, uh, you know, and the communities of practice uh, of, of the big data platform have been absolutely instrumental in many, many pieces of this. Um, there are the providers who contribute to, you know, making our data uh, well-organized and visible through Guardian for people to action on. 
to push all of this forward. Um, and there's a number number of others, I, you know, who I may not be thinking of right now, but I, who I'm very grateful to, including our funders, um, who've, who've enabled this to happen. Um, but I particularly want to call out our what I call our guardian angels, uh, the, the, the SIO team. Um, uh, the SIO is responsible for a lot of what you saw here. Um, and and uh, in particular, Pythagoras, uh, Sotiris, Antonis, and Panayotis. Uh, there are others, Christos and George, I know who work on this, but, but I couldn't fit everybody in. Thank you to them as well. Thanks everybody for listening. Sorry for um, not having much time for questions, but we do have about 10 minutes and I'm certainly happy to stay longer. Um, that was a lot in a short time. I can revisit anything you want to. Thank you very much for coming. Hi, Meda. Elizabeth online. Thank you very much for this very uh, detailed uh, uh, guidance in the uh, Guardian ecosystem. It sounds very rich. Uh, my question, I have two questions. They are very small and technical, but anyway, um, you had the step where you certify th that your data set have been checked for PII, so anonymized or removed from any personal identifiable information. If the person doesn't tick that, is the upload blocked? Uh, uh, in order to move forward uh, in, the, in the workflow, to send something for review, it is mandatory to check these uh, boxes, yes. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you cannot submit it for review. Uh, okay, because I thought perhaps there's an, an option if you do not tick because you are not super sure, it goes to a kind of uh, staging area or restricted area where you can always go back uh, to the team of your team members and ask them to check. Okay. Uh, it, it is in your task. So uh, unless, uh, if in the case that uh, you are not aware of that, mm -hmm. then uh, you should just ask uh, another team in your member to check it. Okay. And all the members have uh, added right in that. So the other uh, team member that actually has the knowledge to check it, to check it can see the, the resource and uh, uh, check. Did you have another question? I had a second one. I don't know if you had me too. Might as well. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's just that um, it's great because now you can annotate the columns of your data set with the ontology concept idea, which is uh, very nice. I, I was just wondering once this is done, uh, is there anywhere on Guardian or um, a feature that enables uh, querying those IDs, you know, so, using the ontology terms to retrieve the, the data sets or the, the data? That, that is the, the idea, you know, and that's, it, it, if you remember many years ago, we were working on a little demo tool with, um, this was Brian Lowe uh, of Ontokali. Uh, to try and slice and dice the data based on those annotations. Uh, you know, that is what we're aiming towards. And so, you know, not everybody was involved in that, but, but this was uh, through the Phenoharmonis workshop that you um, organized, but it was one of the breakout sessions for that focused on agronomic data. So yes, I mean, ideally we would want to be able to uh, be able to sort of answer the question, uh, find me data sets across Africa um, where you're, uh, you know, you're adding nitrogen fertilizer as urea, um, uh, you know, and at least 50 kilograms per hectare um, um, off, off the fertilizer, something like that. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of detailed query uh, and being able to aggregate those data sets quickly to form a collection depends on um, standardizing the data. This is, this is just standardizing the data labels. But there's much more to it than that because the data structures, formats, et cetera, could still cause problems. And, and um, there's another effort on going through excellence in agronomy called CARIB that we're, where we're working on that as well. So these slowly, or next year, these two efforts will have to all come together for us to get to that ability to be able to um, you know, show me those data sets that I just talked about uh, for Africa, show them to me on a map, um, and then let me download all of that data. And now, uh, you know, I can, I can stick it into a model with a lot, a whole lot less effort. That's where we're heading. We're not there yet. Okay, yeah, I agree that also the, the quality of the data is important. We had discussion about data sets yeah. having different resolution of GPS, yeah. for example, or various <laughs> units. So you still have to harmonize that. 
Yeah, okay. yeah. Thank you. So this effort, the CARIB effort, I didn't talk about it because it's not strictly part of the Guardian work, but um, it is ongoing. It is building on the work that Camila, Jordan, and Robert did. Uh, those are the data sets, sets we're starting out with. Several of the people involved here in this call are, are you know, are, 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 who are on this meeting are involved in that uh, through the Excellence in Agronomy. And, and at some point, pretty quickly, we will be trying to, to see where these things will come together and how they should dock. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Meda. Sure. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, and so Marie Angelique has, uh, has two questions also as well. Yeah. Yes, yes. So, yeah. so I have a few questions, but, but that's, uh, that's okay. So the first <laughs> were, were, were on first scribe. Yeah. So you may, so in the example that you showed, you use like an historical data set. So how does it work? I mean, I, I'm assuming that this data, data set is already published in, on a repository. You know, How does, um, work? does the record is going to yeah. be updated with the? Yeah, um, you could probably in the versioning in the life cycle uh, part of that fair scribe, you could probably specify what version that is. Um, it should. I mean, if you're if you're including, um, I don't know, Pythagoras. Do we want? I, I would I would say that it would it would go in as version as an improved version uh, too, because we probably don't want to replace the original data set. But Pythagoras, what is the current workflow right now? We have not tested that. I haven't tested that anyway. Uh, the idea is that uh, it's uh, up to the user, up to the uh, repository manager actually to decide if uh, he would like to replace an existing uh, record in, in this case in uh, Dataverse, because now Firstcribe supports publishing to Dataverse and this can be any Dataverse. So if uh, uh, your organization is using a Dataverse uh, uh, repository to deploy datasets, you can uh, start using Firstcribe uh, uh, now. You don't need to do anything. Uh, you just need to connect your uh, account with your API token uh, uh, inside uh, your uh, uh, <coughs> account settings. Uh, so uh, you have two options, which is up to you. You can either uh, override the existing uh, uh, metadata if you want to have one record, uh, or uh, I would uh, I would uh, imagine that uh, a, a better practice, perhaps, since uh, the data uh, per se are not changing, but uh, you actually uh, add uh, some uh, extra annotation files, you could uh, just add a new version uh, of this data set and versioning is supported both by Firstcribe and at the other end of the story at uh, Dataverse. So it's a yes, and it's up to you to decide if you want a new version or to delete uh, the resource from scratch and uh, have a new record. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think in Dataverse, you cannot really delete stuff. I mean, I think once the DOI is created, it's created forever. But yeah, so, uh, uh, so you, thank you. You can delete it, but then uh, this DOI is not valid. So if you have uh, published uh, uh, anywhere this DOI, it, it will not be valid. So, uh, so this is why I, I'm saying that the best uh, uh, approach uh, to my view is just to override the metadata uh, as new version. Yeah. Okay, and on that uh, same topic, then the all the, like the annotation file that you create in using the vmapper tool uh, will be also pushed to the dataverse, correct? Yes, all the extra, all the extra files, yes. Yeah, and so I've noticed that the, the format of the vmapper annotation file like was something weird. It's JSON. Oh, I don't know. It's ah, a okay. JSON and uh, we still are working on the details uh, with uh, uh, Florida University to somehow standardize this format. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, uh, to, to be able to push the data directly into, into essentially to these translators, they depend on these, what are known as sidecar files, one, two, and three. I can never remember which one does what, but the, there's, you know, they have different functions, sidecar file one, two, and three. Um, and so we will probably ultimately need to have all three of those side, sidecar files um, to be able to, um, you know, relatively painlessly use uh, these crop models that, 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 that are at least the AgMet ones. And this is one of them. This is sidecar file three that's being generated. 
And I see another question in the chat before we go back yes. to Marie um, from Nadezda. Um, do I understand right that tools for adding data sets are external? Tools for adding data sets. Can you, can you specify, can you get on Nadezda and, and talk about what you're trying to do exactly? Yes, hello everyone. Uh, okay, I have put my question in the chat. Uh, actually, I, I, maybe I don't understand right. All the, the the system is very big, as I understand. Yeah. So the part where um, the users um, put data sets, uh, this is some a part of of the platform, or this is just um, the platform um, uh, imports different data sets, right? Okay, so, so, so you, you I know, cannot just. Um, so, so the, yes, the, you know, what we've built, it's not one giant um, system, it's pieces of the, the entire system that dock in ways that we think will make sense. You can use any of those parts, um, you know, or, or many of those parts separately. So if you use, you, you know, if you want to uh, describe your data uh, it, using a metadata schema that that is tied to or, or that uh, conforms with the, the Dublin core metadata schema, you can use the fair scribe tool that I showed you to add the metadata. Um, you, you know, using the account settings, you, you, you describe what repository um, you're, you're going to, you want to push your data to, and you, you can use it. I mean, there's no compunction to push it into the Guardian uh, dataverse. Um, you can set up your own repository flow and, and do it that way. Um, I don't know if that's what you're asking, but that's a, that's, that's a piece that you can use standalone. Um, you, can, you can write to us and say, look, we've got a lot of data uh, of relevance to agriculture sitting here. And if it's a good source of data, if it's, if it's a good repository with quality data, we will make sure that Guardian um, showcases your data as well or your institution's data. So, so, and that, and that data is, it can be made, of course, more um, con conformant with standards using some of the tools I talked about. One of the tools is FairScribe to, to make data that you might already have um, more interoperable, more findable, more accessible, et cetera. You know, you, you, you can use that tool to make that data more fair. You can also use AgroFIMS to collect agronomic data that will be already collected born fair or fairer anyway. Is that, am I answering your question? Uh, okay, yes, thank you. I see, yes, thanks. Um, well, uh, I had another part of the question concerning that, but I, I don't know if now it's relevant. Uh, for the, the data sets that are already plugged in, let's say, yeah, for, for that you already have, uh, uh, that you can already access in the platform, um, do they have, uh, um, detailed uh, experimental schemes and the parameters of the instruments uh, with which they were um, obtained, or it's um, uh, a simpler uh, data set. So, so I can I cannot. Uh, yeah, it's it's it, that no settings of um, that varies all over the place. Um, that in some cases you might have a detailed description, detailed metadata that tells you how the, the, the data was collected, um, what tools were used, what, you know, and ideally the units would be there regardless because without that, you know, the data is pretty useless, but it, it does vary quite a bit. Um, in for, for socioeconomic data, um, oftentimes there's a readme file that accompanies the data set that has some of that data that you're talking about. Um, with external data sets, Again, they vary. I mean, we've got data from the European Nucleotide Archive. We've got data from um, um, Sentinel data, you know, from, from the Space Agency. Um, and, and how those data are treated is very much domain and, and also individual specific for some kinds of data. Um, so I can't, you know, ideally we would, we would have good descriptions for everything we, we, we provide, but we're not in control of that. What we're trying to do is at least make that data visible and um, if you can combine the data with a publication or with a readme file to understand better how uh, those measurements, what those measurements mean, then that's uh, something positive. Yeah, well, thank you very much. Yeah, I see. Sure. Marie, okay. you had a question mm -hmm. as well? So addressing the last slide that you show, uh, showed, like the big guardian ecosystem slide, 
I didn't see anything between like the annotated curated data pool box like that was in the middle of the slide and the, the repositories. So what's the plan here? How can you, the, I mean, I mean, these data like this uh, curated set of data, I mean, it's added value that you added on top of data. I mean, can this uh, be shared back to the broad community? Um, so, you know, people don't have to do like the same or repeat the same step over and over again when they want to do analysis on the data. Absolutely. I mean, that, that was just a rough sort of high level schematic and it's possible that the, uh, you know, the bits and pieces are missing. Now that, that semantic data pool um, is drawing on the data from Guardian and elsewhere uh, that is semantically enabled. And so it, it sort of, I think that answers your question. It's the, the arrows might not be there and it might not be very, you know, I think we, we might want to take another gander at how to represent that better. There's a lot there in that diagram. Um, but but the answer is yes. Okay, and my last last question is like you know I mean the tools that you showed like particularly the annotation like the ontology annotation part uh, seems to be focusing on agronomic data mainly. So is there a plan also to apply this type of tools to other type of data? No, there's I think all of the ontologies are or not all but but a lot of the popular ontologies are already there. Uh, the crop ontology should be there. If they're not there right now, they will be there shortly. Uh, Kebi is there, Envo is there, um, and I think Pitagoras wants to talk to it. But my view of it is, it's not. It's definitely not restricted to um, agronomic data. I showed you agro the agronomic use case because um, that's what that's my familiarity, and certainly the CASA variables are targeting uh, both breeding and agronomic data because breeders do a lot of uh, modeling as well. Um, we don't have anything there right now for socioeconomic data because we don't have uh, a, a mature standard um, in place that that can be brought in. But once that's ready, that that you know we can we can start to annotate socioeconomic data as well. Pythagoras, you want to contradict me or add something to it? I would uh, like to add uh, the fact that uh, the VMapper Plus uh, tool actually uh, calls the ABI ontological services. So. Uh, we have restricted it for the demo to uh, only specific ontologies, but uh, the software per se supports uh, all the ontological resources sitting in EBI. So in principle, it's a big yes in your question, Marie. Great, thank you. I don't see any more questions or end raised. So I think we can close the webinar. But yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Celine. Thank you very much, Meda. Thank you all for attending. Thank you, Pythagoras, for being there. Thanks, everybody. Thank Take care.